everyone, welcome to another Average Angler live match video at Acorn Fishery today on the second round of this year's Winter League. I'm in B section and I'm drawn at peg 31, which is not too bad a peg in this section, so I'm happy with that. Just where the blue car is there, that's Mr Walsh, he is end of section for me. And then, so all the guys opposite there are not in my section, so I've not got to worry about them at all. This is all about section points. This gentleman here and the one next to him on the bridge are in my section and then my section then goes around the corner out of sight so I can only see three anglers and there's another three anglers in my section that I can't see. So seven of us all together. So oh, I've just got to fish my own match and hope that what's going on here is better than what's going on around the corner but there's nothing you can do about that. I'm going to be starting off dobbing and I've got lots of different lines set up today so all the all except one of these top kits has got a rig on. Um, a lot of the lines I won't use, but it's just in case I've got something to try. They're all going to be low feed lines apart from one line out right here. Well, I'm just going to put a bit of baller ground bait in to start with, right out of the way to the, in this peg to my right. Then I can dob all over here. I can have a little dob down to this platform if that doesn't work before I start thinking about putting some feed in. And then I might just like really, really gently fish it over there with maggots and really, really tight, see what's in there. And then I can drop down a little bit deeper and I've got some rigs for that as well maybe with pellets or whatever uh, and I've got a short line for later on if, if if I feel like the fish might just come in just come in at the bottom of the slope here I can put some pellet in and just try and nick one or two at the end which may bonus fit which may be good bonus fish these are all thoughts that go from here and as the match unfolds it will change uh, the wind's just put a ripple on the water because it's been absolutely like a mirror so that might help or might hinder well, it'll help, the, it'll help the fishing, but it might hinder me pushing my rig over into those reeds. Um, what else have we got going on? I've got some worms with me, which I've got a rig, I've got a rig set up here to the left, but I've not put any bait in, I won't put any bait in. And if I struggle in and I can't get a bite on anything and nothing's working and I need to get some fish in the nets for some points, then I shall chop some worms up, yeah. bomb them down that hole, and that'll be in the last resort, trying to make something happen with that. I'll probably be a mixed, mixed for silvers anyway. Or I could even try and put it back over the top of this ground bait and put this ball in. So we'll see. Loads of little weird ideas going around in my head, but trying to keep it simple, starting off on bread dobbing. Next time you hear from me, we'll be fishing. Right guys, we've been dobbing for an hour with bread, can't get anything. There's one spot over there where I get indications but I couldn't catch, so I've gone over with a more delicate rig, put some maggot in. Fish a tiny, tiny little. I'm look at that fish. He's so dopey. <laughs> yeah. Bow looked as well. Just on the outside of the mouth. I landed that with that little tiny hook. The only reason I landed him is because he didn't put up a fight. I've not got my right way on, but he's ten all day long. He's ten. Definitely in there. It's interesting to see that dobbin, dobbin rig. Is the dobbin rig shallow? Yeah, I think the dobbin rig might need to be deeper. Look, he took the, he took the uh, bristle off me float, but I've got the removable bristles anyway, so we can see that, but he took the bristle off me. Sorry, I was chuntering to myself, I forgot I was on camera. So, yeah, my dobbin rig was actually probably a little bit too wasn't on the deck. I mean, it's caught that size about. <sighs> Ridiculous. Right, let's see if we can find a... I'll turn you off, I'm going to put another stem in the float. Another... Right guys, this is the hour. Hour and a bit update. Hour and 15 minutes, I think. So you saw me land that carp. Now that carp was hooked on the outside of the... Definitely hooked on the outside of the mouth. He wasn't feeding and I've nicked him. And he just is not realised that he's hooked and I've, I've scooped the net under him. And I've had him. He hasn't really come to his senses. I've just hooked another one. He's got halfway back, come to his senses, sharp and, and done me on that light hook. So what I've done is, um, I've put a slightly bigger hook on. And, um, I'm just using the same rig because this rig seems to be working nicely. This time I'm just going to put a bit of bread on just to see if they were 
we'll take it off the bottom. I'm not tapping any maggots in this time. We're going to be really cautious about how much bait I put. But there we are, as soon as the bread's gone in there, back in there. That's just with that, the bread just touching the bottom, that is. That's better. Smaller carp this time. There's a few of them there, I don't mind building a little weight of them up. Well, that was good timing with the cameras, wasn't it? So, <coughs> there we have it. Little one pound carp, not even a pound. I'll click him as a pound though. And if I catch another one, I can... So I've just gone down a punch size as well. So when I was dobbing over there, I was using quite a big punch. But now I'm using a more traditional style of punch. Still, I think at 6 or 8 mil, I think it might be. 8 mil, by the looks of it. An 18 coys are not. Which is quite a, you know, still a substantial enough hook to land most of the carp in here. Even though it's an 18, it's not like a traditional 18. It's got a little bit of weight in it, so it sinks the bread nicely. And the bread puffs up really big, so it'll completely cover the hook, so the hook will be completely irrelevant. That, that's, you saw that there live, as soon as that settled. As soon as that settled, it was, um, it was gone. So just... And I dobbed across, and I dobbed across, there was a few spots where I had indications, and this is where I had the most indications, so I couldn't catch or dob in with a more sort of off the bottom rig, but there was definitely fish in this area, and I did actually prick one when I was dobbing in this area. So I thought I'd tap a few maggots in and just see if I could see whether or not they were small fish. I tapped a few maggots in and then I had a 10 pound carp. Like I say, he was foul up, so I can't take too much from that. I went back out again, did the same thing, up to another one. I don't think he was as big, but he, um, he well, definitely wasn't as big, but he pulled out of him because he went a bit wampy. And so I thought I've got to change now because if I catch, you know, every fish counts today, it'd be rock hard. Uh, peg on the bridge to my left side of Fuca Cart. He's just put another one in his net now. I can't see what anybody else in my section's doing. Indications on this bread, which is good. Might put a mark for a double maggot and just tap a maggot, some maggots in on the next put and see what happens. Um, just thought I'd give you an update. Um, mark in my section to my right, he's foul up to one big one like me. So he's in a similar position to me, weight wise. God knows what's happening on the other pegs because I just can't see him. They might be struggling, they might be all empty in it, and they might be, you know, last in section, but who knows. It's far too early to worry about them things, and there's nothing you can do about them anyway. Right, guys, it's just gone 12. Got a, I'm on 14 pound of carp, I've lost one, which I think I was far, I think was far looked. So, over, over where I put, where I caught that nice carp from, on the maggot, I've just gone over that area with bread on the deck and just sat there and it just you get no indications you get nothing then it's just gone um so i've had a 10 pounder a three pounder and a one pounder um i've lost one now i've got this one i've been over me lying to me right down the middle just for 10 minutes with a maggot on to see if there's anything on it nothing there so i've just topped it with a small ball of ground bait and some loose feed and then i've just dropped before i went back on this line i've just dropped shorter a slightly deeper rig slightly to the left just at the bottom of the slope and I've just tapped in a tiny amount of uh, just tapped in a tiny amount of um, pellets the idea being I can just drop on that when when this line slows down or in between fish so I don't pan this line too much just need somewhere else to go this line is producing but I don't I don't want to I don't want to kill it or pressing it too hard, pushing it too hard. So I went around them few lines just to give it a rest and then that's my first pot over there with a bit of uh, bread on. I'm down to this nice single piece of 8 mil. And it's just touching the bottom of this rig and just letting it gently fall in. The bites are just like smash, the fish are just smashing it on the, on the take so we don't worry too much about delicacy. Got a one mil bristle float on, which does give me a nice delicate presentation. That was because I was um, expecting to fish maggot touching the bottom of this rig and um, 
picking up them tiny little f one -y sort of small stocky fish that are in here. So I was surprised when I looked at that £10 carb on it the first put. I'm very lucky to get it out of the, the hook that I had on, so I quickly switched to this. And I just feel a bit... I tried it with the bread and the bullets just seemed to be a little bit quicker with the bread. And everything I've hooked with the bread seems to be properly hooked as well. So that was another one there, it was just uh, no indications, no nothing, didn't look like anything was going to happen. And then it's only 100 miles an hour, the float's gone. Little lift and the fishies are hooked. Which is what we want. Try not to do big Zorro strikes because then we're going to just have foul looking things. Acorn is notorious for foul looking things. We got where are you paying? We got 80. 80. Get the band to go in on. People accusing other people of an £80, pound. I don't think anybody's got £80 pound down this end of the lake. Very hard. A lot of people like myself didn't really get a proper bite for an hour. Um, a lot of people found looking fish and losing them. But there's fish, you know, there's fish about. So I'm quite happy. Just got, I've got something to work with. Just got to try not to blow it. Keep it ticking over and get some good section points. The name of the game. Right guys, I'm trying to see what time it is. It's uh, 10 to 1. So we're finishing at uh, quarter past 3, so we've got two, two and a half hours basically, so halfway through the match. As you can see, I've got one on. I've just had him off the line over where I thought I've hooked him over on the line where I've caught most of the carp from, in between the gap in, in the little root bits of grass over there. Where he's staying out, I'd say he's not hooked properly. <laughs> Today the fish ain't fighting that hard unless they're foul up. Um, what have I done since I spoke to you? I've had an, I've had a carp about six or seven. I've had two little little one pound stockies. Um, I had the one I had the carp six or seven over the bit deeper pellet line. But I've had another bite over it since. I've come back off that and gone back up here. And I'd, uh, this will be the third fish in three pots. It might actually be hooked properly. It's, it's, the way it was coming in then, it looked like it was up properly, but it's a big fish. Much be a big fish up properly. It's a very slow bite, almost like a liner. One of the rapid sort of bites that you've come to expect. It's a very odd fight. I suspect it is foul locked. Very odd fight. He's a good fish, so I'm going to take my time with him because if I can get him out, that'll be a result. There's a good chance he'll ping off, but what can we do? We're not fishing a big hook. Um, we're just we're really trying to make the night. Yeah, that's strange, yeah. We got it. He's just looking the fin. That's what he's saying, but he's just locked in this fin here. He's another little, I'm going to say four, maybe five pounds. It's clicking five just to be safe. So I've got 29 pounds on my clicker. But I suspect I've got more like 26 or 27 because I've been over clicking on purpose. I've misplaced me uh, punch there, he is. Yeah, so I'm having a mixture of properly hooked and foul hooked fish. It's just that's what happens at Acorn. I'm definitely over there cruising around. The fish that I'm mucking are close to the deck. They might be so that, you know, they're either feeding or just sitting very close to the deck. And I'm just tapping in six or seven nuggets on this line. Oops, spread these shots back out. This is what happens with stots. I've got them all nicely spread out because these little left ones do give you very delicate little bites when you get them. This one's in a little stocky carp, they don't rip it around like the big carp do. So, what I tend to do is start like that, just push it up, and then the bread 
just settles up the slope, got this float just touching bottom and then it does that. That's nice. She swam right underneath my pole tip and now we swam. I wasn't expecting to look another one on camera, that's four fish and four puts down this hole. There's a few fish there. The ball is in there at the minute and you couldn't leave it any time, that's what happens in the winter bar. Start to get back to the top kit when they're erratic like this. It's probably another foul. Look at the way he's swimming around. Let's say get your pole snapped if you can't get back there. He's off. He's definitely foul looked. Yeah, but... It's quite erratic, so I'm suspecting it's another foul looker. Wow. Yeah, he's foul looked. He's off again. Three foul lookers and three putts. Don't know what to do about it. Though. Yeah, keep far looking and may lost three in a row now. Hello everyone, it's now two o'clock-ish. Um, in fact, it's, it's ten to two. And almost immediately after I turned you off because I'd far looked a load of fish in a row and then on the maggot, I finally hooked one in the mouth, which was nice and landed in. And I can't remember if I had another one or not after that. About to give it a rest, so I came off. I came off it and went back onto my pellet line, just to my left in the shallow, in the deeper water, slightly left of where I'm fishing now in the deeper water. Um, and I had a skimmer, but it was very. The bites were very, very slow. I, I pricked a skimmer and bumped it, and then I, I also landed one. So I, there was a couple there, but I couldn't get any more. But I'll just give this line a rest, and I thought I'm going to go back on the bread because I've missed a few bites when I was over here on the maggot and off. Did a couple of little roach, and I was wondering if they were just pestering the maggot more than the bread. I don't know why, because they do like a bit of bread. So, I've just gone back in over here and just had a nice little three pound cart. Booked fair and square in the lips, like the rest, so that's good. And then, just as I was speaking to you there, I just had a bite as well, which I missed. And there's another bite there. I don't know if this one's up properly or not. We'll find out in a second. It seems like you get a run of fish off this line. And then you spook them. And you just give it a rest. I've got another line I can use as a resting line, which is uh, out to my right, where I've put some ground bait. I haven't really fished over it much. I've had one quick look over it early. And I've been, but I haven't been talking. This is a big fish. This is a big fish up properly, I think, the way it's playing. Um, yeah, and I have the Tom. Put some Tom Thick ground bait in down on that right. Went over it very, very early, probably too early, nothing there. Uh, and I've just, I have been chopping it. Yeah, it's a lovely big lump. Oh, it's fair and square, and I chopped it to get in before he runs away. He's a nice little eight pounder. Just uh, put them down there so you guys can see him. There we are, nice little comment. Big common, eight pound. Just hoping I can just hoping I can nick one. Just one bonus fish from down here would be brilliant. Just to finish me off, just to finish off the session. Are you guys on the cake? That lot, I just got it, I thought I'd done, I thought, brilliant, I've done really well there and got that one. Ooh, there we are, what's this one? Another one, there's a few there. Very subtle bites, considering that they're big fish. Hopefully it's because they're even subtle and it's not because I'm actually far looking them, but it's hard to believe it's, that this fish just sitting off the deck in the, in the open water like that. I've got to keep the cameras rolling. Hopefully the cameras are rolling. Hopefully you're seeing something. It has been a bit rainy. Make the cameras not too misty. Don't this, the way this is fighting, it's in the mouth. There's another big fish like that one that we just lost. Oh, he swam in the net, he swam back out of the net. Yeah, it's a little torpedo-y 
common. Using the knife, he got wrapped up for a second there. Oh, what's going on here? Being a bit, a bit erratic here. It's a bit, I'm feeling the pressure to get this out and get another one. That's the thing. Sorry if I'm singing to myself, just concentrating.